I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated, because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. This is Hatrick Penry Unbound, and this is your host, Hatrick Penry. And folks, right there, make the lie big, repeat the lie often, and you will fool most of the people most of the time. And that's exactly what's happened with Plumegate, folks, as far as our government and industry is concerned. Now, today I want to begin the broadcast. This is my Plumegate Reloaded every day this week. We're going to jump into Plumegate. I'm going to give you some blockbuster stuff that's just going to blow your mind. It's going to knock your socks off. I got some uh, more good stuff sent to me today from Shazam. Extra special thanks to Shazam for helping me out. Could not do this without your assistance, sir. And to begin this broadcast, I want to, uh, with a positive note, okay, because I've been very critical and at times I've been very disappointed when I look around and say, hey, nobody's really talking about Plumegate. Who is talking about Plumegate, right? Well, mainstream, nah, give it up, not going to happen there. Alternative media, yeah, they talk about the radiation and the Fukushima, but they don't go into the FOIA documents and all the cover-up contained therein. Uh, when you look at the underground media, now I have to go to YouTube and say, is anyone on YouTube helping us out? And there's a lot of people on YouTube who aren't, who aren't even going to touch it no way, shape, or form. You may have a number of places on YouTube you go to for information, but I challenge you, go to their search panel and type in Plume Gate and hit return. Type in NRCFOIA for Nuclear Regulatory Commission Freedom of Information Act and hit return. If you do not come back with something that is pertaining to this cover-up, not the radiation, not the explosion and the meltdown, but the cover-up of the radioactive plume and ensuing fallout, then you're quote-unquote, independent YouTube channel is probably not that independent, and somebody's controlling them. And I say this because YouTube channels like Miss Milky the Clown, okay, she, she guys, you just don't even know. All right, she's recording what I do. She puts it to the screen captures, and then she has it available to be remixed. It's a lot of work. Nobody's paying these people. Uh, they don't even get thanked as often as they should, but it's available for anyone and everyone to remix on YouTube. That's been one of my big things. I'm like, people, if you really care about getting the truth out, you'd make all your videos available to, for remix. And if they're important, people will mirror them. And then if they're that important and YouTube hacks your site or takes it down or whoever's behind all that, then th your your video is already fairly saturated, and it's not going to go away. You can bring your channel back up, remix it back to your channel if you want to. So that's an effective countermeasure, and, and I am beginning to see this going on, on YouTube now. Again, a lot of channels won't touch it. Some of your bigger ones, actually, with thousands of subscribers, but some of the smaller ones I'm about to name, my a tip of the hat to you, uh, a special extra special thanks to you guys for helping me out and to get the message out about the, the United States' largest provable cover-up and conspiracy to date of the radioactive plume and cloud, thousands and thousands of fatalities now. If you look at the Mangano Sherman study, uh, if you look at the Bird study, these are all congruent, and we were hard hit, okay? And as you just heard Obama, nothing to worry about, just staying informed, right? Well, if you truly want to stay informed, You'll go to these uh, YouTube channels, and you will subscribe to them. Okay, I've mentioned Miss Milky the Clown. Again, just amazing a woman and excellent work done. Uh, total respect right there. Miss Milky, the Clown, Miss Milky the Clown on YouTube, please subscribe. Rad Chick, okay, Itchy Sax 4. She's also carrying a lot on the plume gate on YouTube. Please go and subscribe to Rad Chick. Mary Greeley, 1954. Mary Greeley is carrying plume gate. Nibiru Magic, 2012, Nibiru Magic, Carrion Plumegate. Mama Knock, Mama Knock, Carrion Plumegate. Lars Mitch, M-I-C-H, Lars Mitch, Carrion Plumegate. Red Button Studio, Red Button Studio, Carrion Plumegate. Tectal Abyss, T-E-C-T-A-L Abyss, Tectal Abyss, Carrion Plumegate. Greg Stafford, Greg Stafford on YouTube, Carrion Plumegate. 
Bo Knows Entertainment. I think this is the guy from What Really Happened. Bo Knows Entertainment. Carrie and Plumgate. Chaos Souls. C-A-O-Z-S-O-U-L-S. Chaos Souls on YouTube. Carrie and Plumgate. 98-I-H. Sanan F-T-W. Number nine, number eight, I-H-S-A-N-A-N-F-T-W. Carrying Plume Gate on YouTube. Phantom Colts 1, Phantom Colts 1. Carrying Plume Gate on YouTube. Rumor E. Curioso. Rumor E. Curioso. Carrying Plume Gate on YouTube. The Rain in Paris Lights. The Rain in Paris Lights. L-I-G-H-T-S. Talking about Plume Gate on YouTube. Carrying a vid. World number two awakens number six. World two awakens six. YouTube channel carrying Plumegate. Grizzly Joe, Grizzly Joe. YouTube channel carrying Plumegate. Jack Reacher, kind of funny name, but Jack Reacher carrying Plumegate. And also not on YouTube. This, these are not YouTube channels, obviously, but Informable and E N E News also carry uh, information pertaining to the Freedom of Information Act from the NRC pertaining to the specifically the radioactive plume and cloud from the March 11th a multiple meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi in Japan. Now today, before I dig back into the documents from yesterday that we didn't finish, I want to open and let's talk about these Bechtel pumps. Let's talk about the pumps. Again, thanks to Shazam for sending me this information. And as I, I learn more about the pumps, it, it's more critical than I ever thought to begin with. Some of the earlier documents I went through and I read about these pumps I didn't think much of it. And my mom told me she had read through and that they never used them. So as we go along, we're going to find out what ended up with the situation with these pumps because they're very expensive. Who paid for them? Because what I'm seeing here is the DOD jumped in and paid the cost of the pumps, which is very expensive. And it's really about money here, folks. It's about making money. Okay, in a massive industrial accident, the worst historically the planet has ever seen by a long, long shot. Okay, we got people worried about money. We got people worried about protecting the nuclear industry. Not lives of human beings, folks. They're worried about the cash flow, right? And again, this industry, if, if that's how it is, why do we even allow it to exist? I'm pretty certain the solar panel industry is not such a cutthroat, give me your money type thing, such as we're going to see here today. Now, the three screen captures we're going to look at before we get back into yesterday's file, um, I've posted those up under the link as a bonus three bonus screen captures. And let's read from the first one here. And this is, again, from around, I believe, let me double check, the 19th of March. This is like one week into disaster. Yes, 19th of March. And this says, 1800 teleconference, that's a teleconference call involving Bechtel support. Participants were Team Japan, Chuck Castro and Jay Moniger, embassies of Japan in Australia, ET executive team room, and you said, USAID, Cost initially discussed was $750,000. Current cost approximately $9.6 billion. Apparent miscommunication between Bechtel and NRC regarding cost. You said originally green-lighted the delivery based upon the initial cost of $750,000, then halted action based upon a new estimated cost of $9.6 billion. On the call... You said informed everyone that this was not coming out of their funding, that it would be coming from DOD, Department of Attack. I'm sorry, Department of Defense. Per Kathleen Martin at you said is that DOD, PACOM, has authorized up to $10 billion for delivery, 10 b for delivery of the requested pumps. Therefore, officials were attempting to confirm DOD funding and provide flight authorization for the first pump which is partially loaded in Perth, Australia. That's where Perth was from yesterday, P-E-R-T-H, Perth, Australia. The thought now is to authorize the delivery of the first pump, which is staged and partially loaded on a plane in Perth, and put the remaining pumps in standby pending need determination from the Japanese. Per NRC at HOC Japan stated they would accept the pumps and put them into secondary or tertiary use at the site. GEH also agreed to assemble and test the pumps at their location in Japan before they are dispatched to Fukushima Daiichi. All offers for providing equipment appears to be on hold until DOD can confirm payment. Let's look at the second screen capture as an email to Smith Brook and Foggy Kirk, Kirk Foggy and Brooke Smith from L1AO2 Hawk. This is a committee. It'd be a group of people. 
As we see, the LIA07 is a FOIA uh, committee where all the emails and, and telephone calls go there and they redact it. Okay, the email says, subject, 6 p.m. teleconference synopsis. Hi, Brooke and Kirk. Thought you might like a synopsis of the 6 p.m. teleconference regarding the Bechtel pumps that are staged in Perth, Australia. Issue. Cost initially discussed was $750,000. Current cost, approximately $9.6 billion. Apparent miscommunication between Bechtel and NRC regarding cost. You said originally green lighted the delivery based upon the initial cost of $750,000 and halted action based upon a new estimated cost of $9.6 billion. On the call, you said informed everyone that this was not coming out of the funding. This may be a repeat. Um, okay. This is basically a repeat of the what I've just read. Okay. Well, I found it in two places. Again, and in some of these documents, there's a whole lot of blizzarding and doubling up of information. But essentially, this was the, the little PowerPoint presentation from earlier. So in a nutshell, there's a dispute about the cost of these pumps. And there's also dispute, will they even be able to use them? Well, in the meantime, while we're figuring out this and figuring out that, the DOD is going to pay for it. They're going to foot the $9.6 billion for the pumps. Now, there's also worry once the pumps are there, if they get contaminated and you don't use them, nobody takes them back, no refund, no none of that. They're probably no refund anyway because we're talking capitalists, we're talking a corporatocracy, we're ca talking a monopoly, we're talking high-level uh, financial players, that they, that's not how they operate. They don't give you your money back. They just don't. They don't. They are out to make money at all costs. How do you think Bill Gates has so many billions of dollars and millions of acres and property and all that stuff, right? He's had to screw a lot of people over to get there, just like in The Lord of the Rings, The Dragon Smog, if you guys have ever read The Hobbit. Okay, at some point, they say to the Dragon Smog, Bilbo snuck in invisibly to steal a piece of his treasure, and in, in the conversation between the Dragon Smog, again, the Dragon Smog, what does he represent? Power, evil, uh, financial wealth, hoarding financial wealth. The Dragon Smog represents everything bad on this planet, right? Bilbo is the little guy. He's a tiny little guy. And in their conversation, he says to the effect to the Dragon Smog, surely you realize all your success has brought you, has created for you some bitter enemies. Your success has created some bitter enemies for you. Very true. Very true. And so here we are right here. It's not It's not the tact that, hey, I don't care. Get the pumps there, buddy. Cut the red tape. Get it on the plane. We'll talk about these small details later. For now, we have a massive ongoing industrial accident, emanation spewing from the Daiichi facility. And, and what kind of attitude do we have? Is the attitude cut the red tape and get them there? No! The attitude is we need the cash. We're going to need the money. We would love to help you, but we're going to need some cash out of this one, folks. And this is no different than the ambassador from Japan being denied a White House NARIC run. We're going to talk about that later this week. I'm saving one for you later on. And, and, and so you see clearly... Uh, there's the cooperation, the uh, we're not being effective, we just don't have the mindset, we don't have the mentality here for an industrial accident of this scale. Again, nuclear power, it's got to be shut down, not some of it, not part of it, not half, not some. All nuclear power plants, as soon as possible, must be decommissioned and shut down, okay, in the most logical, rational, safe way possible. Get the dry cask up, get the storage taken care of. People are going to have jobs. We release suppressed energy, and, hey, the world becomes a beautiful place. What's crazy right now is there seems to be no push to shut all these nuclear power plants. And no one, do they not re recognize this huge monopoly, this conspiracy to defraud the American public of cheap, uh, uh, clean uh, uh, energy? Yes, it's a huge giant orchestrated fraud, a scam, a monopoly, whatever you want to call it. And so we're saddled with this incredibly dangerous system of energy production. Where I put it to you, we've lost millions, plural, from radiation now. Millions. Well, probably over a mil from Chernobyl. You factor in all the bomb testing and all the leakage from the plants and all this accumulation in our environment because it floats around and around and around in the hemisphere. It doesn't always just land on the ground right away. That's some fallout does, and if you look at my YouTube post from my broadcast today, I showed that explosion that they claimed as a hydrogen explosion, but you can see in that, that, that explosion that a, some chunks of heavier particles go up about halfway to the top of this uh, mushroom cloud, and you can see those chunks fall back down to earth, large pieces of, hey, who knows what, the same stuff they had to bulldoze over for even employees to be willing to go back in to try to affect some kind of 
containment and to, to try to bring the situation under control. Okay, so back to the Bechtel and the pump situation, as we see it unfolding in the beginning, early documents, they say, hey, we need to get a stream of fresh water, not not salt water. We're going to talk about the salt water spray and what effect that has today. They say we need fresh water, we need high volume pumps, we need pumps that, not the concrete truck pumps that might not last a month. They're not built to pump continuously 24 hours a day for years maybe, years. It could be years you have to spray water on it. It's weeks and weeks and weeks before power is ever restored. Is there, you know, again, you be, begin to look at what happens in a massive meltdown. This is worse by far than Chernobyl, worse by far than Three Mile. There's a couple that have been suppressed, a saltwater reactor here, and another one that I'm told inside the states we don't even know about, but Fukushima by far is the worst. By far, now you can clearly begin to see the picture. No one is prepared to handle an event of this magnitude. They just simply are not. Even over here in the States, we don't have the backup pumps all over. We're, we're not prepared to go long term if there's a major catastrophe. You need a backup to your backups. Because what about if your backup pumps and diesel generators on site are radiated with contamination? Well, you can't use them. So then off site, you need to have a secondary a backup. Now, and again, that's still to my satisfaction, not good enough. I would have a tertiary backup somewhere and say, what if it was a massive earthquake and the plant melted down, your pumps and, and diesel generators there were contaminated, you couldn't use them, but then what if your off-site location 10 miles away, what if it was damaged in the earthquake? And you, you need a, Again, now you begin to see the picture, how difficult it is to control one of these situations. It's almost dang impossible, folks. We can just come to that conclusion. When there's a meltdown, not if, not if, when. We've had how many? More than one, more than two, more than three, folks. I don't want to wait for number five or six or seven, whatever the next one is. If you type in and Google uh, nuclear meltdown or nuclear incident, you can go and look at the top 15 or 20, and, and they, they they rate them. Again, they're, it's the IAE and some of these other totally corrupt, bought and paid for organizations that downplay them and, and say, oh, it's not that bad, just like Fukushima. I mean, go to WikiLeaks and go look, and I think the death count's up to 1,000 in WikiLeaks, right? Wow. All I can say is wow, folks. Okay, now, let's look at this other bonus uh, screen capture. Again, much thanks to Shazam for this. Patrick Penry doesn't have the patience or time to dig through a gazillion pages of FOIA documents. Trust me, there's a lot. And we need legitimate help, not trolls and shills and undercover guys that want to help us and screw the whole operation up. Genuine people, you know what to do. Do it on your own. Get busy. You should have already been doing it. Okay, this is a letter from Brenner, Elliot Brenner, and it's sent to a number of people. And subject, upcoming week, this is a screen capture from an email that was sent Sunday, March 13 at 7.02 p.m. The year is 2011. This is two days after the massive industrial Fukushima meltdown. Okay, it reads, OPA Staffers, Office of Public Affairs, Staffers. It has been a very hectic weekend and a good test of our crisis communication planning. Thank you to the headquarters folks who sacrificed their weekends and their sleep to come in. And thank you to the regional folks who fielded a number of calls about our response and the impact of the Japanese situation on our plants. Some things worked very well. The blog was a great way to get information out besides our standard press releases. And NSIR released access to YouTube and Twitter by midday Sunday so we could do more monitoring of what information was quote unquote in the public domain. Let me read that to you again, folks, in case that went by and you didn't catch what that was. Again, I told you I was going to give you some stuff this week that's going to blow your socks off. Here it is again. Some things worked very well. The blog was a great way to get information out besides our standard press releases. And NSIR released access to YouTube and Twitter by midday Sunday so we could do more monitoring of what information was quote unquote in the public domain. Again, they are given special privy access to YouTube and Twitter to monitor what? The few independent people that are trying to actually give you the freaking honest truth, folks. This makes me mad. This makes me hot under the collar. Because while we're desperately trying to get real-time, real information to public citizens for what? To make money? For what? Fortune and fame? No, to save freaking lives. The lives of children. The lives of kids, man. And look, at here's NRC. 
Here's what they do best, folks. They hide from the American public. They hide the danger we were all in. Again, think of it as if a guy has a bonfire in the back of his yard, and he's throwing all his trash on it, gets out of control, and starts burning off through the woods towards your neighbor's house. And this huge fire that you started at your house, for innocent enough reasons maybe, has burning out of control at your neighbor's house. What do you do instead of warn your neighbors? No! You keep your mouth shut. You tell everybody it's not as bad as everyone thinks. It burns your neighbor's house down. It kills them all in the house. And then what do you do? You begin a massive cover. And plus, you monitor social media. You monitor YouTube. You want to know what people are talking about. The fire you created that burned the house down and killed all the people. That is a fair analogy. Department of Justice. Department of Justice. Where are you? What are you guys doing up there? What the heck's going on in the Department of Justice? You know what I think? I think it's for anything but justice. I think it's a Department of Evasion of Justice, right? Protection from justice. That must be what, what else can I conclude, folks? What can I conclude? In National Security IR, NSIR, released access to YouTube and Twitter by midday Sunday so we could do more monitoring of what information was, quote, unquote, in the public domain. Hey, if nuclear power is not dangerous, if it's a good, if it's clean, if it's refreshing, if it's wonderful, as Obama and Mitt Romney, and, all, and even Ron Paul won't talk smack about it, folks. Even Ron Paul doesn't seem to have a problem with nuclear power. If it's that innocuous, uh, why do you have to hide everything? Why are you? Why you have to monitor us? We're just trying to figure out what the heck's going on and get it out there to the people. Because you won't. Because you will not. Okay, this is a crime. This is a willful, one premeditated crime. Let me continue reading. Please take the time Monday morning to review all the press releases that went out and the blog post as well. Again, they have their blogs. They have their blogs. They have their YouTube channels too. You know, after reading this today, well, thank you very much, Shazam. What can I say? After reading this today, it blew my mind because I said to myself, I wonder how many blogs the NRC controls. But seriously, they hire outside uh, companies to do this kind of management. Millions of dollars are spent searching social media to counter what I am telling you today. When I read you the list of YouTube channels that are willing to discuss Plumegate, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there are 30 times that many with 30 times as many subscribers that will never touch upon it because they are controlled by who? The nuclear industry, the energy monopoly that controls planet Earth. Their funds are friggin' unlimited, and they can print money if they have to. They own those guys as well. They own their ass. They own Obama. They own the Treasury Department. They own all of Congress, and what they don't own is compartmentalized or ignorant or just don't know, but that's very few. I can tell you three or four congressmen that actually wrote letters and spoke up and asked questions. That's it. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. Meanwhile, NRC search and social media posting up their own blogs. Where their blogs say, no, there's no way radiation can get over here. You're perfectly safe. Everything's fine. Meanwhile, people are dying. What the freak? I mean, how am I supposed to do this stuff without getting somewhat angry because children have died because of this? Anyone who says otherwise, a damn fool, bought and paid for, or has no business talking about this. You really don't. You should study Chernobyl. You should study Three Mile Island. You should study the effects of nanoparticulates when they're carried aloft into the jet stream and float around the northern hemisphere. You know, plume gate, the plume is still circling every 40-something days. Radchick talked about that. Maybe you want to start paying attention to her and paying attention to what's going on because we're all getting radiated. Are they telling us about it? No. Obama is a PR. He's a figurehead. He comes out and so says, you have nothing to worry about. The reality in the FOIA documents, again, Alex Jones won't talk about it. Mainstream won't talk about it. Natural News won't talk about it. None of these people want, and what's natural about it? And what's the news? And what part is he as a health ranger? Because he's not even a ranger if he ain't going to give you these FOIA documents and say, look, folks, how are we going to prevent another meltdown, one over here in the States, and people getting blasted here? Do you think, ladies and gentlemen, because they lied all about Plumegate, they covered up and conspired to conceal and hide the plume and radioactive fog, do you honestly think they're going to be honest with us when there's a meltdown, a serious meltdown over here? Seriously, you better reconsider. You should reconsider. Listen to what I'm telling you now. They're searching social media, and they are countering what we say. They put five... Uh, uh, YouTube channels up from my one. It's probably more than that. That's a conservative estimate. Straight out of the protocols of the wise men of Zion pertaining to the control of the press. That's protocol number 12. I have an analysis of this on my WordPress blog. Please read about it. Because like I say, they re make the lie big, repeat the lie often, and you only have to fool most of the people most of the time. The first hurt, nothing derogatory meant by it, but they're totally asleep, totally oblivious, about the incredible damn seriousness of the situation where it's even worse. 
because almost two years have elapsed and there's been no move in this country to release suppressed alternative technology. Yes, it gets rid of the monopoly and Bill Gates might go from $50 billion down to, I don't know, $10 billion. Sorry, sorry. Okay, there's no move in this country to dismantle, to decommission, and to get rid of these nuclear facilities. We're waiting. We're waiting for when, for when. And when it happens, you ain't going to know nothing. You're not going to get to know anything. Back to the screen capture. Stay tuned as the week unfolds. We anticipate staffing the Op Center on a 24-hour basis, at least through Wednesday. Neil will be helping us out in that regard, and we may need to ask for further regional assistance if we need to continue the full court press through next weekend. I couldn't have described it myself better. In fact, I think I've used that term before, full court press. It's a basketball term. When they get down to the other end and, and, the guy, and your team scores and they go to bring the ball out, you don't just run down and wait for them to cross center court. You are all over their ass. You're all in their face. Your hands are waving all over the place. This is exactly what the NRC and the DOE and the EPA and the USED and all of these guys, FEMA, DHS. I hope you guys are getting this, folks. And I hope people begin to carry this. Write your congressman. Post it all over. Go anywhere and everywhere and post this so people cannot no longer turn their backs on this. I don't want anyone turning their backs. I want it in your face. Maybe there's no prosecutions. Maybe no one goes to jail. But you know what? In your face with Plumegate, in your face with all these agencies tasked with our safety, bullshit, bullshit. They're tasked with protecting the people who are responsible for these crimes, period, end of story. Let me go back up. I missed a section. Please take the time Monday morning to review all the press releases that went out and the blog post as well. Please use these to guide any media responses you provide. While we know more than what these say, we're sticking to this story for now. Okay, I'm going to read that one again. If I have to, I'll read it five freaking times, folks, because this should make you very mad. Are you paying taxes? And this is the safety you're going to get from your government with these industries that they cooperate with. This is the kind of, this is the caring, sensitive, loving nature of the federal government and our captains of industry. They, they, they really care, don't they? They really care. Let me read it again. Please take time Monday morning to review all the press releases that went out in the blog post as well. In other words, familiarize yourself with our version of the lie, with our lie. Get familiar because as anyone knows, when a criminal lies, you better get that lie straight. And you better get straight amongst as many people as possible because inconsistencies could raise a red flag. Back to the screen capture. Please use these to guide any media responses you provide. While we know more than what these say, we're sticking to this story for now. Mm, 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 mm. Doesn't that sound familiar? That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. There's a country song that says that. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's exactly what we got going on here. <laughs> wow. This is blowing my mind. It's blowing my, knocking my socks off, too, right now. I put socks on after the show again, folks. The chairman has a hearing on the Hill on Wednesday morning which will occur a lot of my time and maybe the place where we really push out our message. We expect fallout over this to continue for a time along the lines of, and the fallout they're talking about here is the not the physical radiation and particulate matter. They're talking about the fallout over this incident shows quite clearly the true nature of nuclear power. I mean, this is the big one, the big one. There's life before Fukushima. BF, before Fukushima, and after Fukushima, AF. We're approaching 2AF, two, two years after Fukushima, right? Things have changed, and they haven't changed, but they should change. We expect fallout over this to continue for a time along the lines of, can this happen in the U.S., and what is the NRC doing about it? This is a marathon, not a 50-yard dash. While I'm expecting us to need full staffing for a while, and may ask that you put off non-essential time off. We also need to conserve our energy, so be sure to take time when you need it. It's a marathon. We're going to need to maintain the lie for a long time. It's a marathon. We're going to need to cover up for a long time. It's a marathon. We're going to need to conceal the facts of the plume and radioactive fallout for a long time. It's a marathon. You'll be repeating this lie years from now. All right, that's those three screen captures, man. And there's a lot more like this. There's, a, there's so much in these documents. Isn't it amazing? Doesn't it really truly reveal the wolf in sheep's clothing? It's like peeling back the onions and finally get to the Wizard of Oz guy behind the curtain. It's a little to be evil. 
He's not very big, but he's extra evil. He's, he's such a liar. He's very deceptive. If you're religious, well, it's Lucifer. It's angel of light. He appears like a really nice guy, and then he kills you. In fact, that's just the way it works. That's a sad reality. Okay, now I'm going to return to where we left off yesterday. And you can pick that up on Uncovering Plume Gate or follow through the link from the Blog Talk Radio post of mine. And we're at number 15. It's titled 15 Briefing, and this is from yesterday's document. And this is Jim Wiggins speaking. He says, okay, I think we should just get going. We'll try to keep this agenda tight and quick and move real quickly. I'll just give a basic overview of NRC and probably go over some current status at the site that I think you're well aware of through your own sources. And then we can shift it over to industry. And industry can give us the, the current status of their plans and what came out of yesterday's meeting. As you know, the NRC has been in 24-7 coverage with a team in Japan supporting the ambassador and the team in the Ops Center in Rockville. The following activities and our principal role has been to support our team in Japan and to do some other communication and outreach efforts here stateside. Basically, the as you probably well know, the facility status is it seems to be on a positive trend. There, there's nothing new to report with regard to degradation of the reactors or the spent fuel pools. And in fact, there are certain recovery steps that are underway and some have been successful. There is, there's power to, they had some power lines run to units one and two. There's going to be power lines run to units three and four. Expected Monday, Japan time. Keep in mind, again, this is the 19th, okay? We've been eight days over a week, no power to those facilities, nothing, nada. Listen to Chuck Castro when he talks about the NUREG manual and how long it takes when stationed blackout for there to be a breach of containment. There will be a breach of containment, he says, and you can check that. Just type in Chuck Castro on uh, either Uncovering Plume Gate or I think I've got it on my HP blog on WordPress, too, and you can read that little clip from Castro, what he says about what happens when the uh, when the power goes out. In fact, maybe I'll bring that up in a second. We'll look at it. So those dose, the, the dose rates around, in and around the facility, appear to be lower than they were initially, and that's a good sign. And there doesn't seem to be any current problems with the pools, although when you look at Units 3 and 4, again, I remind you, Unit 3, MOX Fuel, Unit 4, all those bundles in there of the spent fuel is crowded. Unit 3 and 4, it's still subject to conjecture about how much cooling or how much water may be need in the pools. The water streams in Unit 3, TEPCO is pretty positive about those things being effective in putting water back in the pools. We haven't been able to confirm that using what sources we have. We've been running dose calculations. Not a, There doesn't appear to be any significant new information coming out of it. There is a, a, a hotter area of deposition that runs northwest of the facility. That was constant with the wind direction that existed at the beginning of the event. The wind, most of the time in the event, has been blowing easterly, so offshore. Now, today, it's swung toward the south, but it's expected to be oscillating between the east and the south through the day. We've had several overflights of the aerial monitoring system, gotten data, and part of the process is analyzing these runs as we get them. We're also still working with the Department of Energy to make sure we have a, a handle on it, possible impact on U.S. territories, i.e. Hawaii, Alaska, and the west coast of the United States. We're using DOE's NARAC operation. Again, NARAC is a group that does the plume modeling and analysis and consulting and what have you, mostly plume modeling in this case. We're using DOE's NARAC operation in order to run those extended projections. Our NRC projections are, are limited to 50 miles around the facility. So we've been focusing on in-country, in-Japan dose assessments. Again, I should say right here that they'd state numerous times the furthest projection would go to 1,000 miles away. Okay, that's, that's it. I mean, th I know that sounds crazy, and you would say, well, the nuclear industry in all this time, they haven't developed modeling that would show where the plume goes, you know, 10,000 miles away or 5,000 or 8,000 or 20,000 or, or more than that? No. Apparently, it, it can go to 50. It can go to 1,000. In this case, they're talking about they can go to, limited to 50 miles. In other instances, they say limited to 1,000 miles on this run. So 
That's awful convenient, awful convenient, and damned dangerous for the rest of us that they're not prepared ahead of time with, with appropriate modeling, significant modeling, modeling that, that gives a broad coverage. Don't we want that? Don't we want that at all? I mean, wow, just wow. Don't they take nuclear power seriously? I, I honestly don't think that it's kind of a joke. It must be a bit of a joke to them. It's got a, it's a goof or something. It's some kind of goof. That's all I can figure because it's, it's not as serious as I take it. They don't take it that serious. Or after Chernobyl, right, our government should have got together and said, hey, where this can get pretty bad real quick, maybe we should set up computers so we can model for distances and give people warning and say, when it does melt down, take your potassium iodine, don't eat the green leafy vegetables, stay out of the rain. Just the three easy ones, right? Let me back to the screen capture. As you know, we still have in place a protective action decision for U.S. personnel, and that was to evacuate U.S. personnel 50 miles around the facility. That went in, I believe, on Friday, and that, that still stands. I believe you, the industry, has access and has a lot more data for the rest of the plant status. So with that, I think it's helpful to go directly to, to the industry. Maybe, redacted, redacted, you might want to start off with a discussion of your status and what directions you think industry will be going. Okay, let me come right back to that real quick. Let me go back up to uh, the very top of this, and let's one more time read over this. We have a, we'll make sure we have a, a handle on it, possible impact on U.S. territories, i.e. Hawaii, Alaska, and the west coast of the United States. They're talking about it. They know all about it. They know all about Three Mile Chernobyl. They're talking about it. A White House talking about it. Presidents run for the Hawaii and West Coast. Okay, I want you all to be clear on that. Who all knows what and when? This is the 19th of March. All these guys are talking about it. They all know the plume. They all know the potential. In fact, it's right about the 19th, 20th, 21, where the plume is actually hitting us. It's actually hitting us. They've made no move to warn us in all these many, many days that have elapsed in between. Now, back down to the bottom. Maybe you might want to start off with a discussion of your status and what directions you think industry will be going. Now, if you'll notice, the next two screen captures are solid redaction. Two pages of solid redaction after they said a discussion of your status and what directions you think industry, the nuclear industry, in other words, the nuclear industry will be going. In other words, what direction do you think after all this we've been talking about, all that's going down, all that we know on the inside, again, what we, not our story, we're sticking to it. We know a lot more, but we're going to give the American public a story and we're going to stick to it. Now on the inside they say, well, how is this going to affect the nuclear industry? How is it? Well, how? Well, just look at the freaking redaction here. They don't want us to know. Again, I've been very clear. They all talk about FOIA documents. They know they're being recorded. They talk about calls offline, take it offline. Let's meet you somewhere else. We know we're being recorded. We know we're being recorded. We know about the FOIA, right? Even still, at this point, they looks like they had a two-page discussion about the damn seriousness and how this was going to negatively, righteously so, rightfully so, negatively affect the nuclear power industry, right? Two pages of redaction. We don't get to see it because they know that Patrick Penry, they know Shazam, and they know many others are going to be looking through these documents, and we want to know. Well, we don't get to know. We don't get And still, some stuff has slipped through, and sometimes I like to think on the inside there's some good people there that accidentally let some good stuff slip through and forget to redact something, right? Okay, now if you pass up those two heavily redacted pages where they talk about how this should affect the nuclear industry, right, should shut it the freak down, should shut it down. Yeah, I'm pretty hot today. I'm going to try to use the word freak and keep it, you know, as G-rated as possible. But this should make you mad. And take that anger. Don't go do something stupid or violent. No. Channel it. Educate yourself and become informed and involved. And the best thing you can do, as I have done, is get a laptop, get online, and just start talking about it. And talk about how it makes you feel. You're an ex expert on your feelings. That's what John Lennon said. I can't tell you how to feel, but I can tell you all about how I feel. How does it make me feel? It makes me mad, number one. It makes me very disappointed, very disappointed. You know, Even more disappointed that this isn't a bigger issue, right? I mean, there's no shame in having not covered Plumegate, right? The shame is continuing not to cover Plumegate, right? In that, there is shame. We need to get this word out and get it out to people. If nothing else, maybe it's not a single person goes to jail like the inside job 9-11 dealio, right? Nevertheless, 
Don't let them get a free ride. Expose them for who they are. People need to know. At least inform people. Maybe in the future it will change and we can avoid another catastrophe on this level. Where's it going to be next time? Hey, I don't know. But I can tell you what, someone stood to make billions of dollars off those pumps. Disaster is profitable. Disaster capitalism. I'm back to that again. It's very profitable to engineer a storm, slam the East Coast, and Home Depot sells homes and you sell boats and all that kind of stuff. It's, a, it's beautiful for them. Horrible, horrific for us. Okay, next screen capture. Jim Wiggins and redacted. It would really help us if you can identify a single or a set of points of contact that we might be able to use to set up any kind of future meetings and maybe have a dialogue on things to kind of keep you apprised of what we're up to. You can keep us apprised of what you're up to. You know what? Why is it when I touch the side of this, that particular section blanks off my screen? Come on, WordPress. It says, Jim. Okay, and this is something. Redacted, two redacted spots. Jim, I'll call you separately. We can set that up. Again, I'll call you separately. We can do a lot of stuff about take it offline. I'll call you later on this other line and stuff like that. They know about for you. They know we're listening to them. If the industry is that good, clean, and wholesome, and innocuous, this would never happen. There's no military secrets they need to redact for. We're talking about a Mark I containment system. It's a total failure. Nobody wants to steal your bunk information, your bunk design that's no good and highly dangerous. Ooh. Who do you think would be stealing their industrial secrets, right? All the secrets that failed and don't work? You get a single valve that goes down to one valve. If that valve fails, oh, we're in big trouble. Nobody wants to steal those designs. Why is it reading military secrets? I can't see that. It was a nuclear plant that went up. What, what military what? How is the military involved? Was the military involved we don't know about? Why the redaction, folks? It doesn't make sense. Where's the national security? No one can, can explain to me or convince me they actually had reason to redact this much or anything at all. Who's hiding what names? Are, who, who is in the nuclear industry that doesn't want their name announced, right? Oh, it seems like you're grave robbing and you don't want people to talk about you. Same kind of thing. If it's a beautiful, wonderful, happy uh, industry that's good for everyone, you'd be proud of them. My name is Jim Wiggins, and I work for the NRC. Hey, you wouldn't hide from it. You wouldn't say, hey, redact those names, man. He don't want people to know he's in here working with us, right? We're robbing graves. Fred doesn't want his name mentioned. Keep him out of it. Very similar situation. I'll call you separately. We can set that up. A lot of offline conversations. Jim Wiggins. Okay, that's that's great. Steve Lyons. Steve Lyons, he says, announcing his name. I think it would be useful for the industry group to define the kinds of capabilities that you would like in any sort of a federal liaison or federal role. That would help us identify the best agency and the best the best individuals to provide that support. And then, while I'm talking, another question would be, how soon do you hope to have one or two, at least, senior-level people on the ground in Japan to interface with TEPCO? Let me back up and let me read that, what Steve Lyons says again. Quote, I think it would be useful for the industry group to define the kinds of capabilities that you would like in any sort of a federal li liaison or federal role. Okay, the industry will define the federal role. Let me, let me compress that and simplify that. The industry group will define the federal role. Okay? I, let me say that again. Maybe people don't understand what I'm saying. The industry group, the corporations, the GE, the Bechtel, they define the federal role. You think Bechtel's worried about putting a pump in, putting a container in early? They want that bonus. How much is the fine compared to the bonus? How much to clean up the leak compared to the bonus? Again, we're making decisions based purely on a profit type mindset. We've got to get money for the pumps. We're going to need a few billion dollars. Screw the Japanese people if they're melting down and, and turning uh, glowing at night over there. Again, this is incredible stuff right here. This is so damning of the federal government, so damning of our industry, so damning of it's fascism, folks, the emerging of the corporate and the state. In fact, it might be more of a corporatocracy because it seems now uh, the state is the, they're the bitch, if you will, of the industry. Obama is the bitch, if you will, of the industry. Not to be derogatory or talk down to him, but you know that term. If someone's your bitch, that they, they're beholden to you. They do what you say. They jump when you say jump. They say, how high? You say jump five feet. They jump five feet, right? They're beholden to you. That's what I get out of this. That's kind of what I'm getting out of this. The industry calls the shots. GE, bring good things to life, like nuclear meltdowns, drones, flying robot stuff, that kind of wonderful thing they bring to life. Not fresh fields of grass and clean water in a stream and, and birds happily singing, no chemtrails, no radiation. None of that. GE don't bring you that. GE brings bad things to life. What else can I conclude?
What else can I conclude, folks? So industry, clearly right here, Steve Lyons, at least in this person's mind, the industry is going to define the federal role. They really are going to do that. They're going to say, we need you to do this, Obama. We need you to do that. Just keep the people stupid. Repeat the big lies, which we need you to do, Obama. Thank you very much. You know, and either Obama's totally in on it, a complete buffoon, right, or he's lied to and conspired by all these people around him. Either one of those is horrible, terribly, horribly, horrific, horrible, and he just got reelected somehow? <laughs> Folks, we better get the word out. Uh, we're in a bad, bad way right now. Just waiting. Time is ticking down, waiting for the next meltdown. This one, I got a feeling, a bad, bad, bad feeling, right? I'm just like the guy on Platoon. I got a bad, bad feeling, man. I'm not going to make it out this time. You got to get me out. I got a bad, bad feeling this time that the meltdown's going to be over here. I've actually got evidence it's, it's a... It's not an accident. They're trying to do one, right? It's a long discussion for me to explain to you why someone would be crazy enough to do that, but they have their reasons. Believe me. Okay, next screen capture. Jim Wiggins. I think what, it seems to me what would happen is the ship's beginning to get off the ground. And as I understand it from Tom and the industry people, their, their first steps are to establish protocols for interactions with the Japanese. And I think those things, let's presume, they will be successful in getting them in place. Once those things are in place, I think it will become much more orderly on who's doing what and who needs to do what. I could foresee a lot of these tactical types of, of support requests would likely end up on the industry-to-industry industry side of this because they have, they have the materials, they have the capability, they have the know-how that the government side, at least the NRC side, is a little short on. It may be a bit premature to, to expect that we have a solution today, but I think we, you're, you're right. We'll have, over the next couple of days, the phone calls. In the next couple of days, we'll see if things get a little clearer. Okay, let me read the one passage again. This is Jim Wiggins speaking. I could foresee a lot of these tactical types of, of support requests would likely end up on the industry-to-industry industry side of this because they have, they have the materials. They have the capability. They have the know-how that the government side, at least the NRC side, is a little short on. Very telling about NRC. Really? Are they that short? They don't have the materials. NRC doesn't. They don't have the capability. NRC doesn't. They don't have the know-how. NRC, at least not like the industry. See, again, clearly, industry is in control. And what a wonderful job they're doing, aren't they? Just look at the world today. Look at the radiation. Look at... Just look at what the corporations, GE and Bechtel, are two big ones I can point fingers at right now and say, mm, mm, mm. They ain't bringing good things to life, folks, unless you consider fallout a good thing in life. And I don't. I don't. And the children don't either. Especially, they don't even know about it. Children right now have no clue about this. They don't even know what nuclear power is. There are little kids out there right now. Some of them are no longer with us, thanks to the plume and cloud and a cover-up that we got hit with. They're gone. They're dead now. Stone cold dead. Okay, but there's others growing up now that will one day learn about nuclear power and the horror of it and ask themselves, why after Fukushima, why after you've given the perfect example, perfect reason, all right, it's like when my brother died, my brother overdosed, what was Tony going to do? He was going to quit all drugs, folks, right? That, what, what kind of more reason did I need? What kind of more incentive could I need? You know, honors my brother's death and that he died and his dying cleaned me up and got me clean. So I was determined to say, hey, I mean, he could die for nothing, but if you clean your act up and get your life straight, maybe he died for something, right? And the same thing with Fukushima, folks, the same analogy I make to Fukushima. How many people has died now from Fukushima? It is mind-boggling. Okay, it makes my voice begin to waver when I think of the Japanese children, the number of adults, the American children, the number of American, the people with complications that will result from low dose of radiation. Yes, it's very profitable to the medical complex, industrial complex, very profitable, just like cancer. It pays to keep your population sick. It pays to keep a chaotic environment, environment of chaos. Order out of chaos, profit out of chaos as well. Now, I'll cover one more here, and then we're going to call it a day. Uh, let's cover number 22, offline cell contracts, contacts I've titled this. Again, more 
indication. We know we're being recorded. We have to cover up this damn serious situation. People are going to die. They'd cry for the nuclear industry, cry out for it to be shut down. They'd gather in the streets if the housewives that watched The View, instead of The View, what if The View didn't come on one day and instead one of my broadcasts played to the housewives of America and they could find out about what really happened, what really happened in the weeks ensuing from the Japanese Fukushima meltdowns, plural, meltdowns, plural. The core, they say it's down in the ground now. It's hit the water level and steam's coming up through cracks. It's Nothing's gotten any better. Nothing's tapered off. Maybe it's gotten a little better, but it's still happening. It's still ongoing. It's still ongoing. So they, they don't want you to know that in these FOIA documents because they already know we're going to go straight for the FOIA documents. Well, some of us, again. Alex Jones Infowars won't file for them at all when the Associated Press will. Hey, scratch your head, figure it out, you know. Oh, and before I go, real quick, yeah, Obama, uh, uh, not Obama, um, Alex Jones, I noticed this morning, it has interviewed the Obama cell phone lady, okay? He won't interview me. In fact, he, he stood me up when Bob Tuscan and Alex Thomas of the Intel Hub said, yeah, you're going to be going on InfoWars. You know, they want to talk about your article in the FOIA documents. I was like, wow, great. You know, interesting that I've called Alex Jones out for being Pro because he won't touch the FOIA documents. But then they say, hey, well, they, they want you on the show. Well, the Friday came and went. I never went on. Gundershill, Arnie Gundershill went on. And as usual, he doesn't talk about the FOIA documents. He'll admit he knows everything that's in there. He even said that. I know what's in the documents, but he won't talk about the documents. Now, InfoWars, Alex Jones, he still won't interview Patrick Penry. He still won't interview Tony Muga about the freedom of information and the world's largest provable cover-up. But he had the Obama phone lady on. And I, it ain't a black or white thing to me, right? I don't care about Obama lady per se, the phone lady. I don't know her. I have no hard feelings story. I'm just saying I seem to think I have a larger knowledge base. Okay, and in, in particular, in regards to this huge, massive cover, and if Fast and Furious was important to Alex Jones, why isn't Plumegate and the FOIA documents important to him? The Obama phone lady is getting interviewed before Hattrick, Penry, and you know what? You guys should write Alex Jones in InfoWars and ask him what the heck's going on down there, right? Because I, that what I'm reading to you today, the information contained in my broadcast and my articles and my YouTube videos, it is just a blockbuster amazing. If you ever had any uh, uh, false visions of what you thought this country was before, by the time you listen to my broadcast and go through these documents, folks, uh, your bubble's been popped. I know it sucks to join us in the desert of the real, but as soon as everyone joins us in the desert of the real, we can start trying to fix it up. Right now, everyone else is living in football, la-la, beer-drinking land, and they're not paying attention right now. Last screen capture. So I think that Tom is is agreeing with Redacted. I think we're all in agree that we need to sort this out. Okay, anything else for this call? No response. Jim Wiggins, okay, hearing nothing, well, thank you, gentlemen, for your efforts. It sounds like you've made a lot of progress overnight, or at least you got the beginnings to this thing started. Maybe it's not the beginning of the end, right? It's like the end of the beginning, like Churchill said. So we'll talk at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Redacted. Thank you very much. Jim Wiggins. Hey, redacted. They don't want you to know that name of that person. Again, why can't you get to know his name? Who is this person? Why are you hiding? I thought nuclear power was good and, and awesome and everything. But nope. They're involved with a down and dirty monopoly. They don't want you to know their name. And we're lucky to know who Jim Wiggins is, right? Jim Wiggins says, hey, redacted person. They don't want you to know. You can call us back and give us some contacts so we can do some do some other types of work with those contacts. And, and I understand, he says, I'll give you a call here as soon as this call is complete. And that doesn't definitely prove that they're going to call later and have a private conversation. But again, I show you, I begin to build my case and show you the evidence and build a character. I want you to know who these people are, first of all. Then you can better comprehend when you read through these documents. You say, hey, I know of this guy. He's never on the up and up. He's very sneaky. He wants to take it offline. Here he is, another call me later in this thing. You know, a lot of times they know they're being recorded. They know all about Freedom of Information Act, and they take appropriate measures. In an earlier article of mine, I forget if it was Plumegate Tales from the Script 2 or Plumegate Tales from the Script 3, but I show in just this exact perfect example in there where the guys, with, you know, they say, we have sensitive, politically sensitive information. Can we take this offline? And the guy says, can you call me offline so we can talk about this? And they, and they even mentioned, hey, this freedom of information, be aware that you, and I've got more screen captures coming up from this particular file. I, did, I still haven't even, we made about halfway through the file. 
Okay, so all this week, all next week, all the next week, all the next week. In fact, until and especially when I hear about DOJ sending out indictments, I'm going to crank it up even more. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, we're leaving off on the screen capture 22 offline cell contacts. We covered that. Uh, again, the next screen capture is the same thing. I mean, they're talking about the FOIA documents and keeping their uh, keeping their heads up and 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 keeping the the lie consistent. You must keep the lie consistent. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover today. I will be back tomorrow for more tales from the script, Plumegate, inside the FOIA documents. Again, more blockbuster stuff that no one's read or no one knows anything about yet. This is pretty much breaking this right here as we go over these Nuclear Regulatory Commission Freedom of Information Act documents, free and available to the public. You don't have to be an expert. You begin reading. You build up your knowledge base. You study Mark I containments, get some stuff off the NIRS website, and you too can become a nuclear anti-nuke activist, folks. And it's, it's righteous work. I'm not uh, seeking out the solar cell industry and attacking them. I'm not. They're, they're, they're wonderful. And if they would re release the, uh, the suppressed patents, maybe we could have more than a 20% efficient solar cell. If you go to buy a solar recharger for your laptop, for your phone, look into those things and you'll see they're 20% efficient. That fits right into what I'm being told about patent suppression on solar cells. If it's more than 20% efficient, they don't want your power coming from the sun. Think how damaging that is cash-wise on a financial basis to these giant monopolies. They'll even spray particulates in the sky to blot out the sun and cause global dimming so your solar panels won't collect as much sunlight. That's part of why they're spraying. Part of why they're spraying is to protect the nuclear industry. If you don't like chemtrails, well then, folks, let me tell you, you don't like the nuclear industry because they're using the uranium tailings to spray over our heads. That's part of the plan right there, okay? All right, that's it. I'm going to leave you again, as I always do, with an expert. This guy is an absolute... You're not going to find someone who knows more about the conspiracy than JFK. All right, folks, join me tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern as we go over more FOIA documents. Patrick Penry, over and out.